As someone who writes code, you can always do with having lots of keyboards. Not that you need them all for anything, one's actually enough, but sometimes I like to swap them out. I do have a main one that I use like 80% of the time, it's my go-to keyboard. I'll show you which one that is later. But yeah, these are my favourite keyboards that I've collected over time. They are all so different to each other, and that's what I like about them. I get a completely different experience using each one, and in this video I want to talk about what I like and dislike about each of them. The K4 is the first mechanical keyboard I owned. I actually got it back when it first came out and I have used it ever since. So much so that I actually ended up taking it to the office and leaving it there so I can use it every day. It was the keyboard that really got me past using the regular keyboards I was used to, like the Dell and HP ones. Not that there's anything wrong with those, but aesthetically the K4 looked amazing, especially with those RGB lights. It has all these RGB modes which are really cool and it definitely improved the overall look of my desk setup. But apart from how it looked, I really enjoyed the mechanical switches. Honestly it's so nice to type on. I went for the brown switches which sort of have a typewriter sound to them. But one thing that sold me with this over the other ones that they offered at the time was just how compact it is. I liked how they managed to take a full size keyboard that has a number pad and all the function rows and really condensed it down as much as possible. They filled in every gap to reduce the footprint but it still managed to include every key. And yeah at the time it just looked so unique and I had to have it. With this keyboard I just find myself making less mistakes when typing because of the key travel. I find that the brown switches are a bit more forgiving as one of its characteristics is that you have to press the key past a certain point for it to register as a keystroke. So if I'm typing something and I realise that I'm pressing the wrong key, I can stop midway and as long as I don't pass the actuation point, it won't register the key so I can avoid making the mistake which I will then have to press the backspace key to undo it and that wastes time. The K4 was just in another league to anything I had used before. I liked that it had switches that would let me change the key format between PC and Mac and it also allowed for connecting up to three devices via Bluetooth and it was easy to switch between them using the 1, 2 and 3 keys. But nowadays I mainly just use a MacBook Pro and I'm really not switching between devices so it's a bit of a redundant feature for me. One thing that can sometimes take a toll on me is the ergonomics of it. It sits quite high up from the table. It's just not as flat as the keyboards I'm used to. Honestly, for the most part, it's absolutely fine. And to resolve this issue, it will just take a palm rest to lift your hands up to be level with the keys. But that's an extra thing, and I'm not too keen on having a palm rest, as I have limited desk space, and honestly, most of them don't look the best, and the good ones are expensive. Lately, I find myself using it less and less, mainly because of the noise the brown switches make when typing. Now that I work from home, I find that it makes a bit too much noise. It could be heard across different rooms at night and I didn't want to wake up the little ones. It's not mega loud and during the day it's absolutely fine, but you know how sometimes at night the smallest sounds can sound so loud. But honestly even with those disadvantages, it's a keyboard that I really like and I'll probably never sell. I still use it from time to time for work and it's one I actually prefer to use if I know I'm going to write a lot of code. The keyboard I always find myself coming back to is the Keychron K3 low profile mechanical keyboard with red switches. The thing I like about it is that it's low profile. My hands stay straighter on the desk than they do with my K4. I just like how it combines the low profile design with the mechanical switches. I went for the red switches this time which I prefer over the brown. Here's a difference in how they sound. The reds definitely sound quieter and overall I think it's my favourite keyboard as it ticks most of the boxes, it's got a small footprint, it's mechanical, low profile, tilt adjustable, it has RGB lights and it works on both Mac and PCs. But if I had to nitpick I would say that the battery life lets it down. I only get a couple of days when having the lights on but without the lights I get a lot more so it's not too bad. 
but I like to have the RGB lights on so I find myself just connecting it to my laptop and that just introduces a cable. It's a bit of a shame because I like to keep my setup wireless. Another thing I find myself doing with this keyboard is pressing and holding down the key without meaning to. I'll just be leaning my finger on the keyboard and suddenly there'll be repetitive keystrokes flying in. The red switches are a little more sensitive so it's just something to watch out for, especially it being a low profile keyboard too, there's not much key travel. But yeah, I really do like this keyboard overall, but there is one I find myself using even more nowadays. I found myself really enjoying the typing experience on my M1 MacBook Air. So much so that I wanted the same experience when using my laptop connected to an external monitor. So I bought the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID. I decided to go for the blue one just because I wanted to add some hints of colour to my desk setup. And just as I was hoping, the keyboard is amazing. It delivers a similar typing experience to my MacBook keyboard, which is great. And I don't know why, but I just find myself typing faster on it. And similar to the Keychron K4, I'm making less mistakes too when typing. Probably even more so now that I've gotten familiar with it. Another huge benefit to it is how quiet it is. And that's currently a preference of mine because of the little ones napping all the time. If I do any work at night, it has to be with this keyboard. There is quite a lot this keyboard doesn't have, like fancy RGB lights or any lights really. A backlit keyboard like on the MacBook would have been handy, but it's not a deal breaker because the keys are white, which makes it easier to see in the dark. And because there are no lights, the battery lasts a very long time. Honestly, I probably charge it every couple of months. But there are other things like having no tilt, like the other keyboards have, no changeable keycaps, a horrible function key placement, not really compatible with PCs, charges with the lightning cable, and it only comes in light pastel colours. I'd love if this came in a darker version. Honestly, it's weird how sometimes there can be so many things you dislike about something, yet there's a few things that you like, and that overweighs everything. That's why I get with this magic keyboard. Having Touch ID to log in and verify passwords is definitely one of my favourite features. There are so many more keyboards on my wish list. The ones I'd love to get my hands on are the Nuffy Halo 65 version 1 and preferably version 2 to compare it, but I like the original one more. The Keychron Q1, the Keychron K1 Pro, the Mode Keyboard, and finally the Magic Keyboard with a number pad as it comes in black. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe as I have more videos to come that will cover the tech I use and also some of my own workflows and tools that I've been developing to help me stay productive. So yeah, a lot to come, so why not stick around and I'll see you later.